can everybody be muted except for um, if you want to talk or if someone's talking like me or Hannah. Hannah's going to lead the Thistlefoot discussion. Um, you're going to do great. And, uh, and I'm here. I'm here to help if you need me. Go ahead. That's, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so as usual, let's start with the, on the scale of one to five, what was your rating? Hold your fingers up or put it in the chat. Yes, Brittany, yes. <laughs> okay, cool. So I put it as a five um, on Goodreads. Um, I don't know, I just really, really enjoyed it personally, which is why Natalie is making me do most of the talking. You can unmute yourself, Natalie, that's rude. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go into uh, characters a little bit first. Um, did you have a favorite character? And why were they your favorite character? Winnie was mine. That it. Why is it? Why is she your favorite? She was a, she was a rock. And now she's a person. Magical. And the house. I loved the house. Thistlefoot was definitely my favorite character. Can I say hubcap? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised Hannah didn't say that. <laughs> Close second. Like why we should have got more hubcap. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, I want I want more backstory to hubcap. Yeah. Cause it's like he went he went they were they went everywhere with him. Like Yeah. How? Like <laughs> <laughs> My cat heard us discussing the cat. Hello, Lilith. She does. She, she comes for Natalie. Okay. My voice calls to her. Okay. Okay. So, who was? Did anybody have any least favorite characters? Like people you just really could not stand. Bellatine. <laughs> Why? Like, I don't know. It's just like the whole the whole story felt like there was like no nope, no explanation of like okay these people have these abilities. Like, was it Isaac can change his facial features? He can kind of like chameleon himself. And Bellatine has this ability and, but they never really explain like the full extent of what her ability is and they just all of a sudden call it the embering like i don't know if i missed something somewhere but it was just kind of out of nowhere so and i felt like she kind of she was kind of whiny like i definitely thought she was whiny yeah, yeah like you just got gifted a freaking house with chicken legs what the hell do you have to whine about like and first of all, the fact that you like been gifted a house, but it also is also mobile, and also nobody questions the fact that it's a house with chicken legs. Like, maybe didn't maybe. you post a message in the group about that too? Like early on, you were like, "Why is no one talking about this house has legs?" Yeah, they're they're yeah they're just like go, showing up in these towns in a house with chicken legs doing puppet shows and nobody is like hey this yeah. is strange. I I think they actually mentioned I don't remember exactly where it was but it, like this was a world that had like really mysterious things going on. So like to them like a house on chicken legs is just kind of like whatever. But apparently like there was just like one line in the entire book because I very yeah. distinctly remember that. Yeah, I was just like no, so nobody's just. Nobody questions this. They go to a puppet show. I think if I saw a house on legs, I would have a lot of questions, but I wouldn't say anything. Because I'd be concerned. Yeah, I'd know. probably be calling my doctor and like, hey, can we adjust my prescription? Yeah, I'd be working on me if I saw it. Yeah. I would turn that inward. I um, might yeah. turn around to somebody else and just be sure like that it was there. <laughs> Hey, do you yeah, see that's that? yeah. Okay, yeah. I just want confirmation. Yeah, 
Well, that makes sense. That's valid. You know, I don't know. But yeah, you know, so it's like you get this house and it's like this extraordinary gift and she's just like, <laughs> yeah, I just found her overall to be um, very woe is me. Um, mm -hmm. And I do agree that I don't feel like we got enough explanation to her abilities. Like, because calling it the embering, I really thought that she like in the beginning, I thought that her hands like burst into flames kind of thing. And yeah, that's very much not. I'm sure they do heat up. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I mean, she talks but about Ember, like, yeah, Ember. Stuff, but I just, I don't know. But yeah, Ember calls to my mind like a fire, a flame, a yeah. piece of wood. Yeah, so I, I don't know, know what she was going to do, but I, I liked that she could like, I guess like raise the dead how would like you said they never really explained it how would you explain what her abilities were yeah she, was, she gives life to inanimate things okay. yeah but at the same time it's 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 all very weird it's her whole character arc was just kind of weak it's like i get it we're not we're supposed to oh woe is me kind of thing like that i've got this embering thing and it sets stuff on fire but it doesn't really set stuff on fire but then it's like but now you've got this house that you've got this really good connection to and now we're finding out you can bring things to life and back to life and and then you're like oh yeah i've got to set things right with the house and it's like yeah, I don't know. It just didn't work. It just didn't <laughs> yeah. work. Yeah. She seemed very confused at what she was supposed to do with all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I would Which also I call her like an animator of like yes. human like yeah. Oh, yeah. inanimate objects. But also, when I think of Empering, I also think of like Spark. So, like, maybe she was like sparking these things alive. So, that, that's how I connected it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Of course, Brittany has the answer. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie and I were talking, you know, before this, she mentioned this. And when we were like, we were talking about like questions and things. And we were like, Brittany will know. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll just ask her when we get there. Yeah. Okay, when the meeting starts and we're conducting it, we'll just ask Brittany to educate us. We're doing oh, such a good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. This is based off of, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is based off of um, uh, Jewish folklore. It's Right? Is, does anyone know what the original like story was that it was based off of? Isn't it the Baba Yaga is like um like a fairy tale Russian boogie woman, a yeah. house on chicken legs? Yeah. But I don't know. I should have looked it up because I am fascinated by this concept. Um, if something else I wanted to like put out there. I don't know. I have I cross stitch as another hobby. And if anybody here does cross stitch, there is a really great pattern of the Baba Yaga house um, by the witchy stitcher. Um, and uh, yeah, she has. But it's like after I read this book, I immediately wanted to go stitch that. <laughs> That's really cool. I've done cross stitch before, but um, when things go really slowly, I'm sure this is shocking to Hannah. Um, I have to go fast and cross stitching takes a lot of time. So I can't, I can't, I just can't do it, but it's really fun. And you said the witchy stitcher. Yeah. Witchy stitcher. Um, she, she's got her own website, but she's also on Etsy, but she's got a lot of cool things. Cool. Yeah. I'm looking. Okay. So it says that in um, Slavic folklore, an ogress who steals cooks and eats her victims, usually children. And she's depicted as a house on chicken legs. So she's like a boogeyman, but in Jewish and Russian folklore. Yeah. Brittany shared a link too. <gasps> you did. Good job. Of course she did. <laughs> I mean, I'll just mute myself. I'll just go. <laughs> My husband and mouth. I had a, a John Wick marathon when we were off for the holidays. And it bothered me because that, that was his that was his name. Like Baba Yaga was his name. Like in the from the very first movie. The, the Russians were like, oh, do you got to be afraid of Baba Yaga? And I'm like, like, I'm all for gender, you know, equality and stuff like that. But why are you calling him Baba Yaga? That's weird. I thought they called but, him something else and it sounded 
similar. Um, yeah, the bo the boogeyman. Yeah, but I don't know. I just thought it was weird. I was like, <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought of too when I hear Bobby Yaga. I think of John. <laughs> I've never seen any of those movies, so yeah, I'm, I'm good there, I guess. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, this question is. Isn't this the one we needed Brittany's help on? Yes. Um, okay. So the question is, did you figure out who slash what slash when the long shadow man was or is? Like before him telling us, because they're all like, who who is he or what is he? But he tells you he's a win. It's not a who or a what. And did anyone piece that together prior to him saying nope <laughs> i didn't put it together the way that he, the way that it actually was mm -hmm. but i knew that he had to have been something from what happened with baba yaga and then it's like you heard that history then it sort of put it more together and so it can it, it all connected the dots as i was going along like it was like, eh, something's here, something's here. But it wasn't like when he first appeared where I was like, oh, yeah, that's definitely, you know, some mysterious right. thing. I thought he was like um, something from like the Russian government or something like that, like some like KGB kind of guy that when I when he first appeared. And then yeah, was, that's what I thought too. And then as like his powers came about, I was like, OK, this is getting weird. So. I thought that too, but I was like more, I went men in black, not Will Smith when it was yeah. in black, but like the ominous suits, clad, pale skin, men that vanish into thin air. Mm -hmm. So um, I liked that. That's fun. Hold on. I'll be back. Keep going. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> My computer's dying. Okay. okay. Everything's fine. So... <laughs> So, okay, so talking about none of us figured out when he was, was anyone surprised or like still really confused about him being the when once he told us? Yeah. Did it kind of like click into place once he said it? Uh, kind of like you were saying, Sarah, like you were leading up to it and it. Yeah. But did it all click into place for you or were you still like confused or like um not not grasping i guess is what i'm asking well once once it was revealed yeah then it was like oh okay yeah okay oh i see how it all is born if you will and all that kind of jazz but until then it was kind of like it was still kind of a little mysterious as to um I guess, yeah, like you said, when he came to be. Yeah. You looked like you had something to add, Heidi. I, that, I don't know. That whole point, like, I, I understood it when it was finally kind of explained out. But it was just like, I don't know. I just, I didn't like that aspect of the story. Like, I just didn't care for it. I don't know. Yeah. It was like there just was a lot of things in this whole book that I felt needed more fleshing out. And they harped on a lot of things that okay, we get okay, we get it. Like Bellatine is a whiner, Isaac is a lever. Where's Hubcap? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Where's Hubcap during <laughs> And for a, and for a hot minute there, I actually thought that Hubcap was like the spirit of the dude that he killed did i say yeah. he killed that guy no he i think he kind of felt guilty for his death but it wasn't okay. really like yeah. it wasn't he at his hand it was him, accident. Like he feels yeah. guilty like and that he's responsible yes yeah his name was benji benji yeah yeah but definitely more hubcap it, i mean it was so so beautifully written so lyrically written but yet hubcap this thing this thing is a wasted character i mean <laughs> 
Yeah, see, I thought that I was just being silly and feeling like we needed more hubcaps, so I'm glad that um, we're all on the same page here. Okay, so um, maybe we've kind of answered this. So what was your biggest takeaway from the story once you were done with the book? That I like Jewish folklore and I want to read more. I want to know more about uh, not just Jewish and Russian stuff, but I want to know more about every culture's boogeyman, boogie woman, boogie person. I want to know them all. That's fair. That's very you. That's very own brand. Yep. yep. I am who I am. <laughs> I like the light, the writing too. I would definitely read more from this author. Um, Her. Her prose is it her de debut uh, book? Is it her debut? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't read anything else. No, she wrote um, the Lumberjacks Dove. So, but that's poetry, I think. Um, yeah, this is her debut, aside from the poetry thing. So, can't wait to see her do more things. That was my biggest thing is like, I enjoyed this. I'll probably read it more than once just because it was so like dense with lore and all this other stuff. I'll probably read it more than once just so I can understand it in its capacity, like full capacity. But I would also definitely read more of her stuff because it was just nice. I, I, will, I, would, I will say too um, that the audio book helped. That's what I was going to say. Um, I highly recommend listening to the audio book because the performance is very good. I'm very picky about my audio books. Um, sometimes if I'm reading a book and I just can't get into it, I switch over to the audio book and I'm, I'm sucked in. It's just, you know, a matter of, I don't know. I go yeah, back. The, the, the yeah, oh, I'm talking over you. You're talking over me. What'd you say? Um, you were talking over me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who started first, actually. But um, all I was saying was that the narrator can uh, make or break yeah. Yeah. the book. And, and that, that, that's what I was going to say, too, is that the houses, the the chapters where the house was talking, I loved I loved it. Yeah. Yes. Audiobook, too. Like, the voice. Yeah. The house was the most interesting. Um perspective narrator however you want to definitely the most interesting um and i loved how she was just upright like yeah i lied to you that just made a good story yeah can you blame me and i'm yes i love her, mm -hmm. I love her. yes so this was a good pick do we want more like more things like this in the future yeah this was yeah. um is this fan this is fantasy right okay look at me hannah i'm reading fantasy natalie has it in her head she doesn't like fantasy when in reality she has a hard time so natalie likes to blow through books okay and if you were to casually come across natalie listening to an audiobook she listens to it on like 2.7 that's not she's not normal okay so Natalie has a hard time with world building. That is where Natalie's hard time in fantasy comes from. So like the really like hardcore fantasy, Natalie just cannot do it because she cannot, she needs to breeze through things. At least the first time I need to get it over with so I can put it on my list and then I can go back. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people just, like to absorb it while they're reading it the first time and then put it on their list. Look, the chat agrees with me. Um, one person agreed with Two. me. <laughs> Two people. Well, she, no, just that's not the same thing. She said she's still with oh. world building. Not about your, anyway. That's part of it. See, look, what Brittany's, Brittany's agreeing <laughs> with me. Brittany is agreeing with me. Listen, Brittany. <clears throat> so, this is my birth month. <laughs> Natalie and I are fighting for Brittany's love. That's what's happening here. So, anyway. I'm not gonna um, yeah. 
we're going to wrap that up. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that, Brittany. Um, <laughs> and we'll. Love love huh? <gasps> Happy birthday. Whose birthday? Brittany. Oh. It's the end of the month, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when is your birthday, Brittany? Yeah. Uh, 28. Aquarius. Nice. See, Natalie, we can't do our meeting on the 28th because Brittany won't come. She might come. She's not going to come to it. Anyway. Okay. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk to you about Anyways, this later, okay. Brittany. <laughs> Just add Brittany to the group chat and build yeah. it around her schedule. Okay. So, we liked this one, but are we ready to move on to the the shuttering? Yes, because I have thoughts. I have so many <laughs> thoughts. Heidi, I, I really enjoy your thoughts. Yes, please go. You start. How, yeah. Wait, how how was the rating for everybody? Yes, one to five. I don't know where to put this because first of all, it was a good story. But second of all, guess who left? Who just got back from a trip to Colorado oh, yesterday? Oh. Were you <laughs> reading it while you were there? Just got back. No, I read it right before I left. Oh. And I was like, crap. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about oh, to be yeah. stuck out in the woods, in the snow, in Colorado. But you're here. Nothing happened. You're fine. It's good. It, no, it, mm, no, nothing did happen. But the entire time, I'm looking out my hotel window, like going, "Is there anything there? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything in that tree? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Stay in the sunshine. No, um." <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just, I don't, okay, so I've read one other Anya Allborn book. Is that how you pronounce her name? I'm sorry if that's not. I believe so. And I read Seed, and I was like, okay, I really get this. Um, I'm into it, and then it's like, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, that that happened. Okay. So then I read this one, and it's basically the same thing, but there's snow. So yeah. I'm just like, what do I, I don't know if I can trust her anymore as an author. <laughs> I just don't feel like I'm I don't I don't know. If I read another a third book and it ends the same way, I just don't know. Also, I'm just last thought, last thought, I promise. She's got some kind of weird obsession with Louisiana. I grew up in Louisiana, okay? There are no elk in Louisiana. And in this book, she mentioned something about people hunting elk in northern Louisiana. That's not how that works. I didn't even it's, see that, but no, that's not correct. Remember that, yeah. yeah, there's something, because the one of the characters in Seed live in louisiana yeah and he drives overnight and that look like the way he, she describes it he lives they live in like more southern louisiana and he drives overnight to georgia that's like a 20 hour drive and she's like oh yeah he just shows up overnight like not very realistic no. I mean, we don't know how fast he drives I, we cannot assume that he abides by traffic laws. He's a demon oh, in that book. Is he not? I think the author's I think from he's Poland. a demon. I guess. I mean, I just, I, you know, did not consider that. But, you know. Demons don't yield to yeah. traffic laws. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's true. That's very true. They do. They do tend to uh, break laws. But, yeah. I read four, I think, of Anya's books now. And they all stick to a very similar formula. Um, and of all of the ones I've read, The Shuddering is my favorite because she did it so well. And it was mm -hmm. terrifying. I was stressed. I was grossed out. I know Hannah was very upset about the dog. Oh, yes. I was always upset about the animals. Yeah. No, if anything, the dog should have lived. I know. The dog should have been the one to make it out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why they would even have any. I mean, if if they're not surviving off of the other animals in the in the woods, why would they go for a dog? Why? 
sees the obstacle between him, the the monsters and the humans. True. Yeah. The deer just run away. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that makes me sad because she was just trying to protect. Whatever. Okay. We don't have to talk about it's it. Terrible. It's sad. It's terrible. But um, did anybody have any characters in this book that you particularly liked? Because I didn't really like any of them. No. No, I didn't like any of them either. I was halfway happy that half that they all died. Like, yeah. I was like pretty much like even like even the chick when she was like through the hissy fit and they were leaving. And Ugh, like, was I was mm -hmm. like, it was. Uh, I take that back. Uh, the friend, the Lauren. Uh, yeah, is it Lauren? Lauren? The one that was trying to hook up with a brother. Yeah, Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I kind of liked her. She was that the only one. Like, because for me, this read like reading a movie script. Like, it was, yes. I saw like the movie going as I was reading it. Um, and she was the only one where I was like, yeah, I kind of identify with her. She's kind of mm -hmm. cool. But then, you know, shit happens. And... I felt yeah. the same way about it being like a movie script. Like, it felt like being in a horror movie the whole time I was reading it through. I was like, this would translate perfectly to film or tv no problems no issues and then like it was really nice and atmospheric and i was reading it and it snowed here and i was like yes so it's like sitting in the chair watching it snow reading the book and i was like i'm so into this right now it was it was really good i really liked it i um does anybody play video games mm -hmm. If you have you played Until Dawn, mm -hmm. that is exactly what I was thinking. And I was like, the, the monsters are just like the Wendigo. Like, I was yeah, like, yeah. they're not gonna make it out alive. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, they're all doomed. Yeah, there's no hope. Absolutely. Um, if you haven't played Until Dawn, it's a game where you go and you make choices, and it depends on depending on your choice, your story changes. And they're in a cabin in the snowy mountains, and there are monsters in the woods. And as soon as I started reading this, I was like, I've played this game before and I lost. Um, I like, think you should stream that. Don't say this is book club. Natalie is starting to stream on Twitch. I'm determined to make Natalie a popular streamer. Oh. Um, so I'll drop the link. This is book club. club for everybody. It was just a plug. Okay, anyway, can no, plug this? This, this, is the this is my own fault for bringing up the video games. You did. You said go right in there. For but me. It, if you like video games, play Until Dawn. It's the same thing. And it's so and funny. You can stream it for you to watch it. Shush. Anyway, loved this story. This well, So first, I read Seed first too, Heidi. That was my first one. And I liked it so much that I was like, well, let's just read everything she has. And The Shuddering was my second choice. And the other two I read were The Bird Eater and Dark Across the Bay. I think that was her latest one. Mm -hmm. Dark Across the Bay is kind of like an isolated Airbnb situation. Um, the Bird Eater is a haunted house-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but they all feel like horror movies. They all do. Yeah. Which yeah. I've never experienced before, like last year, reading scary books and making, like getting the same feelings from a book that I would if I was in the theater and it was dark and the music and all the other stuff that they do to like put you on edge. The mm -hmm. book did it, it all by itself with words. And mm -hmm. so that's why I gave it. It starts. Yeah. And, um, it was a really great audio book as well. Um, I think that because of the way it was written and it felt like a movie as an audiobook it was really immersive i am um, i'm from colorado and i was hiking when i was listening to the part about the uh guy that got his stomach eaten or his intestines eaten so that was fun but it was like really immersive and i remember it was hiking through it like looking around and feeling like i was in the like woods or in the scene with it and it was just really great here at Lilith, listening to it it was really well done I'm so glad everybody liked it because I loved it. And when I love something, I'm, I'm going to love it no matter what. But I always like to be like, did you love it too? Okay. I'll <laughs> you like your validation. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I loved it because I kept wanting to go back and read it and find out. Because I am a very slow reader. I cannot do a book in a 
like one sitting anymore. Um, so I'm I just a pretty slow reader too. I just found myself like saying, Oh, I want to get ready. I want to get done with what I'm doing so I can go read my book or I'd like, I'm going to go to bed early so I can read my book. Like, <laughs> so yep. it's, I, but it's like overall, like if I read another one of her books and she tears my heart out again, I don't think I can do it anymore. I just don't think I'm like, no, three strikes. You're out on your board. <laughs> My friend Sam texted me the same thing. She's a TikToker. She's expert book smuggler. She texted me the same thing. She was like, the end. And I was like, I'm sorry, but also you're welcome. It was like uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and Texas Chainsaw Mask are like all. I was going to say endings. that. I like, was going to say the Texas Chainsaw Mask at the beginning, you know, the hitchhiker they pick up. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, we're going to get you help. But she's like, no, turn around. That's how the ending was. Mm -hmm. and so that just made it even more horror movie. Um, yeah. Yes. It was so Before good. the end of the movie, though, I want to share a fun fact about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But oh, gosh. Did you go to the farm, too? Is this your hobby? Like, you go to the sets? And the <laughs> I live right around the corner from the cemetery where they film the opening scenes. And I did not know that. I've lived here for, like, five years, and I did not know that until recently. Heidi, that is terrifying. It's well, it's really freaking odd, but it's also like kind of fun because it's like you watch the opening of the movie, and I was, and it's like, I don't know if y'all know it, I won't describe it in great detail the opening of the movie, but I will say that there are bodies involved on headstones, and you can go into the cemetery, and the headstones are still there, and yeah, so. I didn't know oh, until yeah. recently, and I was like, as soon as I found out the next day, I went right straight to the cemetery and walked around. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. I have something kind of like that because, you know, we're from Memphis. So I read a book earlier this or last year about, uh, it was called Alice and Frida Forever, and it's about a lesbian love affair in Memphis in the 1800s or something. And one of the women killed the other one, like downtown. And they were mm -hmm. talking, about, it was a nonfiction book, and they were talking about where and the streets. And so I was downtown with one of my friends who doesn't read, and I was like, she killed her over there. And she was like, I'm not inviting you anywhere anymore. <laughs> but There was a dead body right there. Yeah, she died <laughs> right there, right where we are. Like, okay, oh, we're at brunch. Can you shush? <laughs> well, okay. I'm kind of like the same way too. When we were in Breckenridge, I wanted really wanted to find this road where like Ted Bundy like dumped one of his victims because he did a lot of murders in Colorado, apparently. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, he did. Yeah, because he apparently really liked skiing. So yeah, he loved to ski. He loved to kill people more, but he did love to ski. Yeah. <sighs> make a whole trip out of it. Kill some people and get some snowboarding in. Yeah. Oh, the exorcist house. That would be so cool. Ooh, I have pictures on the exorcist it. steps. I have pictures of myself in Washington on the exorcist steps. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm weird. Heidi, you just need to like plan some of my weird trips. <laughs> you go to such cool places. Maybe we should do a serial killer book next um, for February. We should do like a serial killer one and then a smutty romance Okay. for the holiday. The perfect pairing. <laughs> yep. Murder and, and love. When love, love goes right better. and love goes wrong. No. <laughs> Honestly. Hmm, that's a good idea. My husband that, always wanted me to write the the marriage of those two. Because he's like, you 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 like to write these little stories about romancy things. What would happen if like the ideal guy just ended up, you know? skinning them and i'm like okay maybe i don't know hannah and i read a serial killer smut book last year and listen i enjoyed it i don't like that i enjoyed it i i had to sift through what that meant but hannah liked it too um it's called there are no saints mm, okay mm. so um just putting that out there it's it might not be for you. That's fine. But uh, if it is, we can talk about it. 
but I would totally read that book, Sarah. So I support you in doing this. All right. I have, I have like three ideas going on in my head right now. So somebody should just give me some time to write them, but my boss just doesn't agree to that. Rude. Um, let's see, what else was I going to talk about? There were a couple of things. Well, I wanted to check in on how the reading for January is going since we, um, took so long to do the meeting and everything. Um, I just wanted to check in since this is a nice little time for us to do that. This, this month, Brittany, you won't read both this month. Okay. That's fine. Well, your birthday's coming up. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Well, another thing is I actually don't really like horror as much. I only read it because of you guys, which is great because that opens up my, my you know, reading genres. But two ghost stories, I think it would just scare me a little too much. So I'm just going to pick up one for the library and call it a day. Are you doing the one that's not horror? Uh, I'm doing the Ghost in Thin Air. Yes, the Mercy of Thin Air. Yes. That one yeah, yeah, the Mercy of Thin Air. We'll probably enjoy that one way more because Ghost yeah. Eaters is a lot. I'm halfway through it, and I'm just like a little like, mm, mm, yeah. mm. like it's, it's it's definitely making my wheels turn in a weird way, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm waiting on my my special one dollar from a used bookseller for the other one. So nice. My yeah. shipping costs more than the I book. Got, I love when that happens. I got my <laughs> copy from someone uh, used, and it came. Um, Signed to someone named Pat. Awesome. Which I think is so cool. <laughs> and then uh, the author thanked me for picking this book the other day. And I burst into tears. <laughs> so, because um, this has been my favorite book since I was a little manic pixie dream girl. So. Um, she sent um, crying selfies. Yeah. Jasper's having a coughing fit. So I'm, I'm muted. I'm oh, not okay. sorry. Characters. Bless. But um, yeah, but the Ghost Eaters book, I listened to it twice. The first time I listened to it by myself, as I usually do, and I was outside eating Indian food in my carport for some reason. It was a nice day. And I at remember. a certain point, I don't remember what point, but I was like, it started to get dark. And I was like, I need to go inside. I need to go. I need to go inside. I just felt very uncomfortable being on my own outside. Um. So, and then I made my husband listen to it on the way home from my birthday trip. And uh, that was fun. He really liked it too. And actually when I met him, I made him read this and he liked it too. So it's not a big deal. It's just whatever. It's my month. <laughs> I'm so excited because I've been wanting people, the last person I loaned this to, hoping that they would read it and talk to me about it. They, we stopped being friends and then they moved. So, you know, but now I have you back. Mom read it when you, you made a blog post about it being your favorite book or something like that. And my mom saw the blog post and was like, that's something interesting. I'm going to read it. And she really enjoyed it. She enjoyed it enough that she immediately read it a second time. Which she's not big on. I mean, she's not like anti rereading, but she doesn't typically um, re -re okay, coughing fits back. I feel good about that because I love I love her mom. So, and I don't like my mom, so I don't have a mom that's like I think that's a good idea. So I have to borrow my friend's mom's. So I'm excited for us all to read it. I appreciate that Brittany knows her boundaries. Anybody else doing that? Not everybody likes horror because the Ghost Eaters one. At a certain point, I was like, eh. He's so. Which is hard to do. I usually don't. I usually don't read horror. I usually read fantasy. Um, but it was really good reading uh, The Shuddering. So I'm kind of excited to read more. Yeah, I, I'm definitely getting, because I didn't think I liked, at the beginning of last year, I didn't think I liked romance or fantasy. And I'm starting to back away and stop saying that. I have to stop saying that I don't like something. I actually kind of enjoy it. So it's been a fun year. I know it's like 2023 now, but I'm so glad you guys are here. Had, we made it such a good year last year, and I feel like we're going to have a good year this year. I'm planning like a book swap, little blind date book swap thing for February so that we can kind of 
you know, I'm going to have a form where you fill out. So if you don't have a wish list with books and stuff yet, um, maybe get on that because I'm going to match people up and then send each other a book. If you, if you want to be, you don't have to do it, but it'll be kind of fun. Um, but me and Hannah have to talk about that. We have a lot, a lot of work to do on that to make sure it doesn't get like all messed up and then not work and somebody doesn't get a book and you know, all that stuff. So, um, also one thing, uh, I'm putting my poetry book that I wrote on, uh, it's free tomorrow, all day tomorrow. It'll be free and you can download it and the, the digital copy. It's really quick. You'll be able to put it on your list of read. You'll be ahead of the schedule because it reads really quickly. It's only okay. Do you do, I knew you were going to, yep. Okay. It's fine. It's a fine little collection. I wrote it three or four years ago. Um, it, it's fine, but it's free. So you should get it tomorrow. So, um, I can, I can link it really quick. If y'all want me to, let me find it. Hannah, talk to them while I'm doing this. Don't leave them. Okay, well, if Jasper, um, wheezes, just, you know, don't mind him. Um, we, we've got some trachea issues. Okay, guys, but that's fine. Um, so, um, Natalie's uh, poetry book is actually really good, and that is coming from somebody. I'm not a big poetry person. I um, I don't. I wouldn't say that I dislike it, but I feel like it goes over my head most of the time. Um, I just feel like I'm not deep enough to get most poetry. <laughs> um, but Natalie's is. Um, I feel like it could. It it can reach people who are not typically poetry people but also poetry people so please don't make eye contact oh i also made it available on kindle unlimited so which is very exciting i don't know why so natalie and i are also i'm gonna um natalie and i are also toying with the idea of a um, in real life meeting. Um, if we were to do something like that, if you were given a heads up and were interested, would anybody be interested in traveling um, to Memphis for an in-person meeting? Uh, I wouldn't mind as long as it's before September. We have a major thing going on with work where they blocked our PTO for the whole month of September and October. So okay. uh, we've we've kind of talked about February. I don't. I think that's not February. Huh? I think it would be pushing it to do it in February. Right. I think well, we that's waited too long. Kind of talked about it because at this point it wouldn't be much notice. Mm -hmm. so, I'm like, where is everybody from? I know it's on the profile, but there are a lot of people in there and I can't keep up with everything. You can put it in the chat if you want to. I know not everybody's around the corner, so. At least you were. I, um, I went to a market for my art I, that I do and it was in Nashville and I met a couple of people that they were like, we have a book club. And I was like, I have a book club. And um, so I joined their book club, naturally. And uh, they have their little meetings at different restaurants around Nashville and stuff. And I was like, well, that seems fun. You know? <laughs> I wish all my friends were here so we could do it too. Okay, yeah, everybody's everywhere. Good God, guys. Y'all don't want to come to Tennessee? <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that. It's great here. Oh, Memphis is not the same as Tennessee. That's okay. true. It's not. I've been to Memphis. Long of course ago. you have, Heidi. <laughs> yeah, because I've been everywhere. Well, apparently. Yeah, no. Are there any murder <laughs> sites here in particular that you visit? Downtown. Yeah. On the river, folks? Or Memphis. Yeah. But. yeah, probably. I mean, Graceland, like, is basically its own haunted house, if you really think about it. We did die there. I know. Which is upsetting. Yeah. Um, what a way to go. Elmwood Cemetery is fun too. I did a tour 
of all the lovers buried there one Valentine's Day. Oh. Um, it was fun. <laughs> Didn't Melissa just, get married there? Yes, at the chapel there. Yeah, I did a tour. Well, I've done, I've done a couple of different tours, um, but I've done one that was like scoundrels that that had that had like uh, the actors like by their to or, or you know by their headstones basically and like kind of give you um, their little story and why they're considered a scoundrel. But I also. Yeah, um, I also did, like, in high school, we did, like, um, I don't know. I, I went at least twice in high school and did tours. But I went to Bolton, and the guy who did it, uh, who founded Bolton, he uh, was buried there. So that's why we were there. Is that weird? That's a weird school fact. Our principal and founder of the school is buried right over there. Let's go see. That's very strange. I'm down though. I would go. Not the, not the principal. I mean, like he started it as a school for his free freed slaves, and they, it was a community yeah. college. Yeah. Don't don't get confused. He still wasn't a great guy. I'm. I'm. Uh. But I mean, I guess he wasn't like all bad, obviously. But not as yes. bad as he could have been. It's I yeah, the high school is surrounded by cornfields or cornfields by cotton fields still to this day. And um yeah, he, it was a school he started for his free freed slaves, and then it was a community college, and now it's a high school. That's wild. Yeah. The only thing I know about Bolton is that I beat them once in my sophomore year. I was pitching, it was bottom of the ninth. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just kidding. It was good. It was a good time. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share, like a happy that's going on in their life or anything that they're struggling with that they want us to send out good vibes for? I'm, I'm turning this into a thing and then we'll go because I don't want to keep you all night. You can put it in the chat. You don't have to say it. Or you can whisper it into the void and I'll, I'll hear it. very receptive well this has been a really fun meeting guys i've had a lot of fun and my computer didn't die well we're whoo, i better hush because it's at seven percent so we gotta wrap this up um i am gonna post the link to my book in the book clubs app tomorrow so if you want to grab it you can it's free on kindle unlimited right now so if you want to go get it the link is in the chat and you can do that um and rate it honestly Okay, I don't want to see none of these five stars everywhere. You're like, great, love her. No, be truthful. And then if I call you crying, it's just part of it. I I understand what reviews are for. Okay, I'm not one of those authors that enters into the space. Okay, I'm I'm back. I'm just I'll call Hannah and probably cry. Um, but either way, be honest and. Deanna, I do, I'm sending you good vibes. Is it Deanna or Deanna? Deanna. I think I asked. Yeah, Deanna. Deanna, okay. I'm sending good vibes for that. Got to meet those reading goals. Yeah. Does everybody have a reading goal for this year? Me too. I did 100. I really want to hit 100. I've had that for three years, and I always end up being short by like 10 or 15. Because I just get into slumps and don't like plow through them like I usually do. But you guys have been very helpful. You add two every month, so it's good. Right. We do what we can. Brittany, of course, yours is super high. Brittany read 195 books last year. Don't ask me why I remember that off the top of my head. I think that Natalie and I might be obsessed with Brittany, but whatever. Wow. Oh, well, we're on Instagram. She like, popped up. You see it. It take, it's, it's taken me three days to get halfway through this Ghost Eaters book. I'm jealous. You're doing good, Heidi. We're very proud of you. <sighs> Don't compare yourself, Heidi. Everybody no no comparisons. I yes. just have a really long commute. So I have an hour to the um, city, one, one, you know, one hour, and then one hour back. So I get two hours a day of reading. And then sometimes if I don't have anyone to eat with at lunch, I'll read at lunch, which is another hour. So, so that, that's where it comes in. Right. And then I read at home. So I do a lot Megan, more. no, uh, uh Megan, no, no intimidating. Okay. 
in 2019, I think I read two books. And we had a book club in 2019, didn't we? You didn't have a book club. I had a book club. Shut up, Hannah. I was involved. And I never read the books. I showed up at the meeting. I ate the food. I left. You I'm super up, excited like, to be in your book club. This is my first meeting, so it's nice to meet you, all of you guys. Yeah, it's nice to have you. <laughs> Me too. My first one too. Oh yay! I do. Okay. Like you are here. I do newbies. I did want to share that when I was in Colorado, I did get to stay at the Stanley in the Stephen King suite, and it was everything I've ever dreamed of. And the whole hotel leans into the whole shining thing, like on that's so it's cool. great i, I told was, my husband about it because i want to go now yeah it's beautiful there like i would go back in a minute um i hate denver though if you live in denver i'm sorry but i hate Denver, <laughs> and i never want to go back <laughs> i live like 30 minutes north of denver and i do everything i can to avoid it okay so i'm not the only one yeah does. it's terrible well, like, <laughs> it really is Maria, please be careful. Yeah. Maria said she's driving. Maria, 10 and 2, okay? <laughs> I got this Airbnb in Denver. Like, we stayed there for, like, two days. And it it was, like, on the ad. This is the first Airbnb I've ever booked on the ad. It was, like, oh, penthouse. And I was, like, oh. Well, it's, like, it described it as, like, an apartment above a business. It was, like, a pub or something like that. But I didn't realize when I got there penthouse meant like six flights of steps to get to the attic of this building that had been converted into this apartment and yeah. basically we just wanted to die by the time it was <laughs> yeah that sounds rough yeah it was bad so yeah but if y'all are in denver go to meow wolf the art exhibit is really cool Heidi, listen, I don't know if you're a list person, but I just, if you aren't, I don't know how we're going to do this because I need a list of all the things you do and all the places you go mm -hmm. for my future. Okay, I can I can do that. What, what format do you need that submitted in? I can do Excel. I can do a PowerPoint. I <laughs> we love Heidi. <laughs> I will email you. Okay, just email Please. me. Drop me, drop me a text. <laughs> Well, um, my computer is going to die, so I don't want it to die mid-sentence or while we're having fun. So, Brittany, calm down. Um, but thank you guys for being here. I hope that this year is filled with books and we get to talk about all of them. So, anything else, Hannah? Um, no. That's okay. It. All right. Well, I'll post the review um, on, or this this recap on YouTube as soon as I can. My computer's acting crazy, so I'm going to do my best. But I appreciate y'all, and I will see you in a couple of weeks to talk about these spooky ghost stories that we're reading. We're going to post well. the poll um, for the January meeting tonight. Yes. So um, we're looking for that. So we're we're going to do better about being ahead of time. Can we do it tomorrow night? <laughs> tomorrow night. Calm down, Heidi, now. Not everybody's ready yet. yet. Heidi, oh, you, were just just <laughs> you just okay. got done, Heidi. Write notes and, and okay. save them. Okay, cool. All right. Well, um, have a great week. I'll see you all next time. Okay. Hey, thanks Bye. for watching. Bye. If you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also visit my website at weirdobookclub.com. See you around.